Hello guys, today we're going to be working through the RealFlow user interface. The goal of this tutorial is to fundamentally understand the RealFlow user interface. Um, so if we start up RealFlow, we're just working in version 5 here. Um, we look, have this project management dialog come up, and here you can put in your project name, location, and once you enter that, the full path will be displayed here. Um, you have your recent projects that show up here too. Um, so let's start by entering a project name, and let's actually add a path first. Um, so I'm just going to add a path here. I'm going to call it real flow, real flow test two because I have one of those <laughs> named already. Um, so I'll name this real flow test, and you'll see down here in the full path that it's located in the folder that you just selected with the real flow test .flw file extension. That is your real flow project. Um, so I'm going to create a new project, and you'll see that you are now given this fresh blank screen. Um, so if we look over here, on the left-hand side, we have our nodes panel and our global links panel. And then on the right-hand side, we have our node parameters. And then at the bottom, we have our timeline down here with the simulate reset and playback controls. You have messages down here for basic messages when you're working in your scene. And then in here, we have our single perspective view, and then at the top, we have our toolbars. So let's first start, and we're going to go into file here, and we're going to take a quick look at our preferences. And now when you first open your preferences, you'll see that you have an axis set up that you can adjust. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is these, um, yx, z, zx, y, and y, zx. Um, this is because that every native 3D software has a different axis that they work in. Um, so if we're going to be working in 3ds Max and Maya, I'm going to select the zx, y axis, and then I'm going to hit OK. So that way, now the axis is uniform with 3ds Max. Um, now let's go over here and take a quick look at importing objects. So if you're going to import an object into your scene, you can either use the native geometry that is that comes with RealFlow, and you can click this little yellow box here, and it'll come up with the geometry that you can select. Or you can go up here and you can import an object that you have exported for use in RealFlow. Um, so if I take a quick look here and I go onto my desktop, I can select here an OBJ or an SD file. So let's select the OBJ. And you'll notice here that I have the letter M. Okay. Now you'll notice here that when I added this letter, um, that there is a letter M fill geometry added to our nodes panel. And then down here in the global links, we have a letter M fill. And now there are options here in the nodes parameter rollout. Um, so if we select, deselect the letter M, you get nothing in the node parameters rollout. So obviously, when you select the node, um, it comes up with your properties for that node. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about what a node is, or meshes, or what they all are. I'm going to show you how to use them, where they're located, and how to add them into your scene. Um, if you want to find more information about these, you can check the documentation that I'll add to this video. I wrote up an in-depth documentation about each of these, how they work, and what they are, the basic definition for them, so that you can better understand what they are. Um, so anyways, you'll see here that the letter M is then added to our nodes panel, and then down here on the node parameters rollout, we have the node properties, so you can set the dynamics to have a rigid body, soft body, or none at all. Um, you can adjust the, the um, position in the scene, so I've hit 2, it's going to move forward on the y-axis, and then you can adjust rotation, scale, shear, pivot, and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to close that, and then we'll look at the initial state here. Um, every simulation that you can do, can, you can use an initial state so that it starts at a certain point in time. Um, then we also have textures down here, so you can load a texture. Um, for use on your object if you're using textures like UV textures and stuff like that. And then down here we have visible. That's awkward. Um, down here we have visible, the display properties for our object. Um, so I can set the visibility to off or yes and then all this other self-explanatory stuff. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go into detail about anything. I'm just here to show you where all the things are located in the UI. Now, the navigation inside of RealFlow is the same as Maya. Um, so if you, la if you press Alt and then left click, you can rotate around your object or your pivot point. Um, if you hit Alt and mouse, middle mouse click, it is panning around your object. If you hit Alt and right click, you can zoom in and out on your object. Um, now, there is also shortcut keys for your menus. So right now, as you can look up here in the viewport, we have it set to perspective view. If you hit 1, you're going to be looking at the top view. If you hit 2, you get the front view, 3 is the side view, and 4 is perspective. Now these are very helpful because you don't want to have to constantly go in here and after you right click and then select front or 
view side. Now you can just go, hey, one is top, two is the front, three is the side, and four is perspective. That comes in very, very good handy when you're trying to scale something to uniform with an object, or you're just positioning things in your scene. Um, another shortcut keys are seven through zero, which are your shading keys. So seven is bounding box, eight is wireframe, nine is flat shaded, and zero is smooth shaded. Uh, if you're working with something, you can usually go eight, to work with wireframe. If you're doing a simulation and want to see how it looks physically, you press zero to look at the smooth shading to see how it looks. Um, so let's just keep this back at wireframe. Now, as with other native software, if you're working with 3ds Max or something, then you'll understand that W is usually move, uh, E is rotate, and then R is scale. Um, Q is also select objects. They don't have a translation transform gizmo that comes up. Um, so if you just want to turn off these axes and gizmos, you just hit Q. Um, okay. Now let's go to the toolbars up the top here, and you notice that there's all these buttons up here, and you're like, I don't know what these are. Uh, we're going to go through the first top row up here, and we're going to leave these until a later time when we actually work with simulations and meshes and stuff like that. Because um, normally these are, these are mesh um, simulation toolbars and utilities. Um, so let's just first start up here. You'll notice that this one, these are pretty self-explanatory. This is a new project. This is an open project, and this is save project. Um, and then these are what we went through before. The Q, W, E, and R. So you got your select object, move object, rotate object, and scale object. You also have your axes command here, which we don't usually use that often, but I'll explain what it is later at another time. And then these are the tools here, your utilities. These are what you can add to your scene. Um, so this one with a little box, this white cube, um, these are your grid emitters. These are used basically for making large simulations when you want to use a grid and stuff like that. We won't talk about that now, I'm just showing you guys where these are located, like I said before. Um, this little one with the blue, three blue dots is your emitters. Um, circle, square, sphere, triangle, cylinder, pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are your daemon tools. Daemon or daemon, depends how you want to pronounce it. Um, these ones with the K prefix are your kill, kill daemons, so they kill particles depending on what they are. Um, you get your wind here, you got vortex, which spins your particles around. Gravity should be self-explanatory. Drag force, which slows your particles down. Noise field, which adds noise to your particle simulation. And now this yellow box we went through earlier as well is your geometry, the native geometry to real flow. You'll find that you have a null, sphere, hemisphere, cube, cylinder. These are all just basic geometry, so if I click this, I can add a sphere to a cube. It's my scene, I can scale it, play with it. I can even go into the nodes, roll out, and make this uniform so that they're all scaled by 2 and X, Y, and Z. And then I can also just delete it. And then we go into here, these are our meshes, render kit, standard, and grid mesh. Uh, we'll go over these later. Most of the time you're going to use a standard mesh unless you're, wor unless you're working with a different workflow. This little one here is a gray camera. You can add a camera into your scene so you can look at it from a different view. Um, these are the real wave emitters. Um, these are real wave is used when you're making big simulations such as an ocean. Um, it works with the new hybrido system inside of real flow 5. Um, it's a little bit, it sounds a little bit complicated but in a later tutorial I'll go over that as well. Um, real wave is just, like I said just for using uh, utilizing large scale water simulations such as an ocean. And then this little cube with the yellow kind of star at the top here, this is your iDoc panel. Um, this is if you want to link up multiple computers or single computers to help use processing power to simulate um, your, your simulation. <laughs> anyway, so like any other piece of software, you can also find these toolbars located in another, um, another place. So if you right click here, you can go to add and all your stuff is right here. So grid fluid emitters, particle emitters, daemons, objects, all the same stuff that's the top row is down here in the right click. Okay, another function that is extremely useful. So if I'm way off here and I'm trying to get located and center this, this M into the center of my screen, it's really, really hard and I'm going to be frustrated and I can't always get it perfectly. Um, so if you right click here, you can go center selected and then you can zoom in and rotate around your object that you have selected, or you can go and zoom selected, and it's going to zoom into your object. Um, the same thing here goes, like I said earlier, um, if I'm way over here, and I don't want to right click, and instead I'd rather go through the tedious process of going up to view, I can go center selected. 
And as you notice, there is no zoom selected in this screen, so I can just right click and go zoom selected. I am now focused on my object. So if we take a quick look down here, you can see our timeline down below. We have 300 frames loaded for the simulation. We're going to take a quick look at our simulation settings. Now to get to these quickly, you see your simulate and your reset button here. They have little arrows next to them. So I click this little arrow when I go options. I can adjust my FPS output and the minimum and maximum sub steps, which we'll go over again later. And then the rigid and soft body st um, solver quality. Um, so here we can adjust our FPS output. If you wanted it to be 30 frames, that's... Um, for HDTV or something like that, or 24, which is standard film. Um, so we'll click OK. We're going to work. You normally work in 24 frames per second unless you're doing a high quality simulation that you want to slow down and use and just slow down so it's not very realistic. Um, you can do it that way. Um, so there you go. And you also have your playback controls. So this is play through the whole simulation. This is go back to the beginning. And this is go forward frame by frame. OK. So now let's take a quick look at actually simulating an emitter. Um, so if I delete my object, I can go up here to the top and I can add a circle emitter. And default it points down, it's got the default scaling which is 1, 1, 1. And then I can click simulate. And you'll see particles are formed. Um, so the quick shortcut keys here, useful shortcut keys. Um, if you hit A, that simulates your simulation. You can hit A again to make it stop. And to reset your cached frames or your simulation, you hit Control A and you can reset it. Um, so that's how you add a quick emitter. Now I want to add, say I want to add some geometry, so I'm going to add, say, a vase. And I'm going to position this emitter so that it's right above it, which it is. I'm going to move it up a little bit, and maybe I want to rotate this bit, make it a little bit interesting. Um, so if I go like that, you'll see that the emitter is placed perfectly above the vase. Um, so now if I'm going to simulate this. It's going to go directly. It doesn't seem very realistic. In fact, when it hits here, the particles are start, going to start flying up and going whatever direction they're going. And now, why is this? This is because we have no gravity in our scene. There are no daemons in our scene, so there is nothing that is realistic about our scene. Um, so if I add gravity here, you'll notice that's loaded with the default settings for gravity, which is 9.8. It's a 4, so it doesn't affect the actual velocity of your particles. It's not bounded, and it doesn't act as if it's underwater. So if I move this over and get it out of the way, um, I can just leave it there. I don't have to touch any of the settings because 9.8 is the default gravitational constant for physics. Now, this isn't a physics tutorial, it's just real flow. Um, so we'll just leave that the same it is, the way it is. And then if I wanted to, I can remove the icon so I don't see it anymore. So if it's in the way, I can just remove it. I can also remove the visibility. It's not going to decrease the functionality of our object. It's just going to remove it so you don't see it anymore. So now, if I simulate my particles, you'll see that they flow down and they actually stay in the glass without coming out. There is gravity in our scene now, so it's acting as if the particles are being pulled down, as they should. So that's how you quickly add the emitter geometry. You can add daemons into your scene too. Now let's take a quick look over here at the nodes panel again. Um, say I have these, say I have a lot of geometry, say I have a ton, a ton of geometry, and a few emitters, and then a few daemons here. So I have all these daemons and emitters, and it's going to be kind of confusing to look at them all, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at. There is group functionality inside of RealFlow, so if I select something, I can hit group. And now these objects are put into the group. I can also select more geometry, I can put them into this group. I can take the group and rename it, so I can name this one geometry. And then I can hide it there, and then I can also take the daemons and create a group for that. And I'll call this one emitter, uh, daemons. And then I can select all of my daemons and add them into that group. Hide it. And then obviously we have our emitters here, so we'll add one more group for our emitters. So we'll go here, call these emitters. And then add the rest of our emitters in here. That way we have a sense of organization inside of our project. So now if we select these folders, they are isolated according to what we selected and what we grouped them by. Um, so there you go. That is the basic functionality of the RealFlow UI. A quick look at where everything is located, some of the uses, some shortcut keys, how to navigate around your scene. The node panel and node parameters rollouts are located there, and you get all your emitters here, and how you can right click and go through things, and then zoom selected, center selected. Um, so that is the quick look at RealFlow. Uh, the next tutorial will be on a basic simulation and how to import and export between 3ds Max or Maya, whatever software package you're using. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for more. Cheers. Bye now.